recording and then we'll go through the do now. Okay, so for this do now, again, there are two questions. So question one is dealing with this table up at the top. So the initial rates represented by this equation up here um, are given in the table. Based on the data, which of the following is the rate law for the reaction and why? So remember, when you want to write a rate law, you have to use the data given. So when you want to write a rate law, you have to use the data given. So I'm going to zoom in even more on this table. So if I want to see what the order with respect to NO is, because remember, to write a rate law, it's rate equals K, and we're going to have times the concentration of the reactants, but they're going to be raised to a certain power. And those exponents are the orders of reaction for each reactant. So for NO, I want to see where does NO change, but Cl2 stays constant. So I notice from 1 to 3. From 1 to 3, NO changes, but Cl2 stays constant. So I'm going to see how it changes. So just in case you're like, uh, it's too early for math. Well, let's just use our calculator to help us. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.025 is 2. So from 1 to 3, the concentration doubles. So let's do the same thing with the rates. 1.82 e to the negative 4 divided by 4.55 e negative 5. So when the concentration doubles, the rate quadruples. So when the concentration doubles, the rate quadruples, that's second order. So we would say the reaction is second order with respect to NO. That means that NO is second order. Now let's do the same thing for Cl2 and I'll use a different color just to make it a little bit easier to see here. So let's look at Cl2. I need to see where Cl2 changes, but NO stays constant. So I'm going to look from 1 to 2. Again, I'm going to do 0 0.1020 divided by 0 0.051. That's 2. So we're doubling the concentration of Cl2 from experiment 1 to 2. So let's look at the rate. 9.1 E negative 5 divided by 4.55 E negative 5 is also 2. So when I double the concentration, I double the rate. Whatever I do to concentration, I do the same thing to the rate. That's first order. So we just wrote the rate law. Right, again, if I want to write it, so it looks a little bit nicer. My rate law is rate equals K. So rate, rate laws always start with rate equals K. Times the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of Cl2. Now, do, do these orders match the coefficients? Yes, but again, they don't always. You cannot use the coefficients as your orders of reaction. You have to use the data. Now your why, all right, so this, it could say why or it could say justify your answer if it was a free response question. I'm going to actually say C work on table. That counts as a justification. Or I could go through and say NO is second order because as I double the concentration, I'm quadrupling the rate. So it's changing by the square, resulting in second order. Cl2 is first order because as I double concentration, the rate doubles, and that's directly proportional. That's a first order reactant. All right, so either one of those works, but here's your rate law for number one. So number two, so this has nothing to do with number one. These are completely different problems. So the rate law for the reaction of nitrogen dioxide and chlorine is found to be rate equals K times the concentration of NO2 squared times the concentration of Cl2. By what factor 
So it could be two times, three times, four times. By what factor does the rate of the reaction change when the concentrations of both are doubled? So here's a, a simple way to look at this. And this might look familiar. This was the most missed question on the quiz. Right, this one was the most missed question on the quiz. So what we can do is let's just plug in twos for each of these. We're using two because it says that both of these concentrations are doubled. So if I do rate equals K times two squared because it's second order times two, let's multiply all those numbers together. Rate equals K times, so 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. There's your factor. So it changes by a factor of 8. So rate increases by a factor of 8. That means rate increases 8 times. The original rate. So again, the easy way to go through is just plug in twos for every concentration in the rate law. All right, so any, any questions on the do now before we look at what we're going to go through today? No. All right, so I'm going to switch back to our do now slide. So lots of switching back and forth today. Um, for today, um, I'm going to start just by by briefly going through the, the simulation again. So remember this Beer's Law simulation is what some people started yesterday after the quiz. Um, maybe you haven't started this yet. Remember that the simulation is taking place of one of our labs that we usually do. Um, the simulation is actually on your Chromebook. You can, you're going to be adjusting concentration and you're going to be seeing how absorbance changes. So you'll be able to see when the simulation is set up, you're shining light through a substance and you're changing the concentration of the substance to see how much light can shine through. Um, on Google Classroom is this entire assignment. All of the information that you need is in the Google Doc that is linked. Once you open that Google Doc, it's going to create your own copy. That is what you will then turn back in. So this is due tomorrow at 2.30. Um, I would recommend starting it at some point today, um, but you will have tomorrow's a work day, so you will have tomorrow. And I know it's a two-hour delay, uh, but you still have, what is it, 40-some minutes in class that you'll be able to work. So even if you don't start it until tomorrow, you still will have 40 minutes that – eh, you might be able to get it done. Um, but then you at least have until 2.30 to, to completely get it done. I had some questions sent to me yesterday. So as you work through the simulation, um, it gives you concentration in micromolar. So this U is micro. Uh, micro is the opposite of mega. So there's actually one million micromolar in one molar. Um, but they give you the units in micromolar. If you want to use that the entire time, that's fine. But make sure you're paying attention to your units. So always pay attention to your units. Um, and so, again, the Beer's Law simulation, you're actually doing a different solution based on your last name. All of the instructions are laid out in Google Classroom um, in the instructions section. I typed out all the instructions for you. They're also in that Google Doc. So for today, what we're actually going to be doing today and I talked a little bit about this yesterday. Um, there's a group of AP Chem teachers. So I'm part of this group of, of AP Chem teachers that we are actually getting practice questions written for us from those that develop the AP exam. So they sent us the first one. Um, and so I'm just calling it AP exam prep number one. I created an assignment in Google Classroom around this yesterday. So today, what you're going to do, so we're, we're done learning new kinetics, right? The rest of kinetics will come after break. But what I want us to do, because we're about halfway through the year, 
is I want us to actually go through some exam prep. Now, um, you're going to notice down here, the first thing is, oh my gosh, I didn't study, I didn't review, that's okay. You are not graded on how well you perform on, the, on this prep. You are graded on the reflection that you complete after. All right, so it's okay if you're like, oh, well, I got, you know, five out of 18 multiple choice. That's okay. I want you to focus on the reflection after. So all of these instructions are in Google, Do or in Google Classroom. So if you click on the assignment that says AP exam prep number one, all of the instructions are there. I went through, I typed all these instructions out. So please make sure you just read through those. Then you're going to complete the practice exam. So there's a link in Google Classroom in the assignment. You'll click on the link. You'll go through the practice exam. All right? Use a calculator, periodic table, equation sheet, just like it were anything else. Um, again, you are not graded on how well you perform on this. But after you finish, so after you get done with this practice exam, and you'll see that here's a screenshot from the first question. I went through and I did it. Uh, once I got the link. So I went through, I took this as well. And um, once you get done, it'll actually pop up and say, review your score. So you're going to actually review. And this is the biggest part of this, because this is a chance to see what you remember from first semester so far. Um, this actually covers the first four units of the AP curriculum. So we don't go unit by unit like the AP curriculum. Um, I kind of go in a different order than what they do, but we have covered all of this material so far. So there's nothing in this practice exam that we have not yet covered. Um, but then what you're going to do after you're done, when you're reviewing your score, you can see down here, I, I took a screenshot um, of the Google Doc that I created. It's this exam reflection. So up at the top, you can see, and I know it's hard to see right now, but it says multiple choice score out of 18. You're going to type in your score out of 18. Three responses out of 25. So they grade this whole thing for you. You're going to put your grade out of 25. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put an X next to any of the questions that you missed. And what I did is I went through this practice exam and I broke every question down based on the topic. And so then it's going to give you a chance to see, okay, you know, I have really struggled with intermolecular forces. I need to make sure that um, you know, intermolecular forces is something that we review. And so really, this is a way for you to see what you know, but it's also a way for me to see when it comes time to go back and review, what do I need to make sure to, to cover? You know, if everybody, if, well, let's like stoic, right? If stoichiometry was one of the topics that a lot of people struggled with, I'm going to make sure to spend time reviewing stoic. So you'll answer questions on the reflection sheet based on your score. So make sure that you keep that review your score page open uh, while you're going through this Google Doc. There's really just four uh, reflection questions at the end, but this is really just to see what you remember from first semester and maybe uh, the topics that you know we need to spend more time reviewing. So that's what you're going to do today. It should take about, I think it says it should take about 60 minutes. Some people will finish a lot sooner. Um, it's not going to time you. There's no timer up at the top that tells you 60 minutes is over. Um, but, you know, just time yourself. That's about 845. And then you should be able to finish this reflection after that. So that will leave you tomorrow to do the Beer's Law simulation. So in Google Classroom is everything that you need, right? If you go into Google Classroom, under the classwork tab, it says AP exam prep number one, practice test and reflection. So it's at the very top of the classwork tab. It's not in any uh, topic. So read through the instructions. It has the link for you to start the practice exam. And it also has the exam prep reflection sheet. That's what you will then turn back in. Okay, so as you're working through um, you can feel free to leave the Google Meet while you're taking the practice exam. I'll stay on in case there's any questions. Um, but once you're done, just work on the reflection. If you get that done today, you can turn that in today. And then you have tomorrow for the Beer's Law simulation. So that's all I have. Um, are there any other questions before I let you guys go?